Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news episode. This one, we have a, actually some pretty big news. Intel, hot on the heels of NVIDIA talking about their RTX graphics cards. Intel has teased their upcoming video cards, and by upcoming I mean a couple of years from now. But they wanted to hop on the bandwagon and make sure they got that in there early. So Intel's got some announcements that are potentially somewhat significant going forward anyway. Case Labs sadly closes its doors in the past week. It's uh, been announced by Case Labs that the company will be going under and Nvidia of course dominating the news cycle with RTX and with its Turing architecture coming up soon on a, as a follow-on to the Volta architecture that we talked about previously with our Titan V. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut liquid metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. Quick GN news first, as always, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats. The last couple are still in stock before we're in a waiting period for the next round to come in. So if you've wanted one, they're still in stock and shipping now if you want to grab one. And also the blue, the cobalt colored GN beer glasses with the gold trim are back in stock now too. So NVIDIA, obviously huge news for the past week and more coming as NVIDIA has announced now formally that there will be some Gamescom discussions in about a week in Germany and we will be there. So uh, Gamescom is where uh, we'll be meeting up with a couple of other people in the industry as well, but Nvidia has got its event spanning a couple of days there and there should be some sort of gaming celebration, I think is what they're calling it. But basically it's going to be probably some kind of uh, touring related architecture discussion or at least video card teasing announcement because at this point we've seen it from SIGGRAPH on the professional side, so it follows that the gaming side would be next. So at SIGGRAPH 2018, NVIDIA announced a formal announcement of their Touring GP architecture and debuted their new Quadro RTX cards. The Touring architecture highlights a number of new features like hybrid rendering, NVIDIA is calling it, and real-time ray tracing. RT and Tensor cores are part of this, it's not really news at this point that NVIDIA is looking at real-time ray tracing, but this formalizes that it's NVIDIA's next big push. The Titan V and Volta architecture did have a significant foothold for real-time ray tracing. It's something we've talked about before where with help from things like denoising and with a relatively limited amount of rays, it is possible to do real-time ray tracing. We're not there yet in the gaming world. It'll happen eventually, but it seems like NVIDIA wants to make that happen sooner than later. NVIDIA has been pushing for this now for several years. Originally, Tony Tomasi in a 2012 or 2013 presentation stated that they were looking at something like 2015 for real-time ray tracing. Missed the window a bit, but maybe it'll happen with the help of Touring. So the tensor cores that we saw in Volt and the Titan V can actually be leveraged for real-time ray tracing, which makes them a bit more interesting. It's not just the machine learning and deep learning that we previously thought it might be. Uh, they do have more uses even within the world of gaming something that until the actual RTX, not like the GeForce RTX version, but the ray tracing software announcements from GDC is kind of when we learned that TensorCores might actually have some use outside of things like deep learning and machine learning where it was originally targeted. Additional news on the Touring front, NVIDIA is pulling over FP16 support from Volta Architecture. Touring is more or less a stem from Volta Architecture, not a big surprise there. And also, uh, they've got some Int4 and Int8 support enabled with the new Torian architecture. Not sure how much that's going to impact our audience, but we'll find out soon, I suppose. This will be more useful for non-gaming applications immediately than in gaming applications. Uh, pro visualization will certainly get use out of all the features announced at SIGGRAPH, as that is a pro viz conference. So gaming comes next, but the stream and multiprocessors have been reworked architecturally as well. We don't have full details or a block diagram on the SM layout just yet, but typically the really high-end like GP100 type cards have had a different SM layout than the gaming cards anyway. So it'll be something where we might need two different diagrams one for gaming, one for the high end, depending on what NVIDIA has changed specifically in the SM layout. And part of NVIDIA's focus is to speed up BVH processing here. This was big for SIGGRAPH for that audience. So for many 3D manipulation programs, Blender included, like the 
Blender GPU tests we've done in the past, uh, they will use bounding volume hierarchies, or BVH, for object storage. And Torian specifically is trying to speed up and accelerate BVH as a uh, basically container for objects within that software. So that's a big push along with ray tracing. And then NVIDIA is targeting a 25x increase in ray trace casting over Pascal, just if you want a point of comparison versus previous non-Volta architectures. Torian will be a successor to Volta. We previously detailed that T Volta, the Titan V, had a huge push for asynchronous compute support, for low-level API support, and in a way that was reflected in games like Sniper Elite 4 and other DX12 or Vulkan games where it was properly executed, not just a wrapper. So we already confirmed publicly that you can expect continued improvements in the front of async compute, something that NVIDIA hasn't been as loud about previously with Pascal, but they've been making moves for it. And additionally, alongside this announcement, NVIDIA rolled out their first Torian-based GPUs, formerly the Workstation Class Quadro RTX series. Not only do the new cards highlight, obviously, the Torian architecture, but they also feature RTX branding rather than just straight Quadro or GTX branding. So this alludes to NVIDIA's focus on real-time ray tracing and dedication to it being the big thing for this generation. GDR6 memory unsurprisingly is here as well with the new cards. We've already kind of detailed that several months ago at this point. And the cards are RTX 8000, 6000, and 5000. And in terms of CUDA core count, if you want to call them that, uh, it goes from 4608 on the 8000 and 6000 down to 3072 on the 5000. Tensor core is 576 for 8 and 6000, 384 for 5000. And then the memory is a big difference here. 48 gigabytes of G6 for the RTX 8000, 24 gig for the 6000, and 16 for the RTX 5000. Again, these are ProVis cards, not gaming, clearly, if for no other reason than looking at the VRAM capacity. They are quite expensive. Just in case you're curious, it's 10 grand US for the RTX 8000. It's about $6,300 US for the 6000 and 2300 for the RTX 5000. And the memory bus width is 384 bits for the larger two and 256 for the smaller. The NVIDIA is using 14 gigabit per second memory on this. So the first G6 round, we know that Hynix, Micron, and Samsung have all been making GDDR6 for a while now. Hynix started its mass production around July or thereabouts, maybe June, and Micron for a while, Samsung for a while now. And 14 to 16 gigabits is not unreasonable to hit. 14 is going to be more common originally or immediately, and then 16 later on as the companies uh, iterate on their process and improve their yields and things like that. So that's what we're looking at for NVIDIA's big news. We'll get back to NVIDIA in a moment. But first, Case Labs closes. So this is certainly sad news for the PC community. Case Labs has been a, uh, a very high-end brand for case manufacturing. If you've ever thought about getting a gigantic box for open-loop cooling, maybe with tons of drive-based support, stuff like that, that might last you a decade. Case Labs has been one of the foremost companies to provide that experience. And it shows too, because a lot of their cases have been in use and deployed for a long time at this point, and they've been in the 500 plus dollar range for many of the really high end ones. So Case Labs announced a few things for this closing. They said that it looks like one of their major accounts has gone uh, default or abandoned them or something. They were basically dropped as a client, and Case Labs as a result has lost a significant part of their revenue stream. Case Labs also cites material price increases of upwards of 80% as a result of what they claim to be the uh, current tariffs that have been discussed lately in other hardware news episodes. And so by losing the large account and facing the material price increases, particularly in metals, Case Labs was forced to close business. And it looks like there was almost a deal to save the company, but it does not look like that one throughout this time. If you had an open order for Case Labs, they say that they're trying to fulfill all orders. The parts orders are more likely to be fulfilled than complete case orders at this point, as they were largely handmade uh, or individually ordered for the orders that came in. So no guarantee that people with open full case orders will get them. We don't know the status on how refunds are going to work, but follow up with Case Labs if you have any open orders, because at this point, you might not get it. Next one, NVIDIA. So back to this with filing a trademark for GeForce RTX, specifically for GeForce RTX. Rumors were swirling for a while that the new GPUs could eschew the long-standing GTX branding. And with RTX announcements at SIGGRAPH, 
those stopped being rumors and started being reality. After SIGGRAPH, it looks like with the uh, Gamescom announcement, we might see RTX branding continue for GeForce cards. NVIDIA has filed its trademarks, and over at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, NVIDIA filed for Touring, Quadro RTX, and GeForce RTX. As of now, two of those, Touring and Quadro RTX, have already been unveiled, so we can expect clearly what the next one would be. And Gamescom makes the most sense for that, as that's where NVIDIA has already publicly indicated their gaming event. I believe they call it a gaming celebration event, which is uh, probably underselling it a bit. NVIDIA teases the next GeForce lineups. So this is also in the news. After announcing Touring and the new Touring-based Quadro cards, NVIDIA teased new GeForce lineups with a short video. Subsequently, Redditors over at our NVIDIA dissected the video and found some Easter eggs alluding to what appears to be a GeForce RTX 2080 announcement. So based on that, we might finally know the answer to whether it would be 1180 or 2080, unless NVIDIA is just messing around with all of us at this point. And also, rumor for this one, Intel's X599 chipset will power the new Skylake X architectures and HEDT or HEDT Plus CPUs coming out soon. Intel has been working on a new HEDT platform in response to AMD's Threadripper 2, and rumors suggest that it could coincide with a new X599 chipset. While details are currently scarce, information indicates that the chipset will use LGA3647 sockets, offer hexa-channel memory support, 12 DIMM sockets, and feature chips based on Skylake X silicon. And this might coincide with a 28 core processor, but we're not clear at this time. It was uh, sort of originally shown as a processor at five gigahertz, it was overclocked, clearly. We had a problem with some of the presentation of that, but it, we're not clear on, on what the status of that processor is. It might have been going towards Cascade Lake eventually, but was on Skylake X originally when it was shown, as far as uh, we understand it, we're pretty confident in that. So. X599, not clear on what the final processor choices will be for that, but it does look like 28 core makes sense for, uh, for that platform. And then finally, Intel graphics cards are actually real. So in a move that seemed out of the Chris Hook and Raja Kadori playbook, Intel followed suit on NVIDIA's announcement to note that they too would have GPUs someday. And this, by the way, Chris Hook and Raja Kadori both now work at Intel. So makes sense that those playbooks would come into play for Intel here. Intel's pushing for a 2020 launch on its GPUs. We're not clear yet on whether those will be consumer focused or for professional users, but it's a couple years away anyway. Intel is pushing that its IGP will be, quote, set free for its future DGPU options. And uh, that was really the start and the end of their marketing stick for the new GPUs. Not much to show at this point. There was some blue smoke, some shrouded graphics cards, likely old Larrabee stock, and a teased future for Intel in graphics, which actually, all of the uh, lack of information aside, Intel coming into graphics, especially for the gaming market, would be great because we could use some more competition there. Uh, it's been a duopoly for a while, and NVIDIA has the lion's share of the market, clearly. So some more competition would be good if Intel can pull it together and do something outside of just ProViz, but we'll see what they do. And then finally, hardware sales. We'll link a couple below. There was a 1080 SC with a 750-watt G3 modular power supply for 490 bucks. If it's still on sale, it'll be linked below. Uh, monitors have been not bad lately. Graphics cards at this point, because we know RTX, or whatever it's called, is coming up, uh, clearly the Pascal cards will be considered obsolete soon. They're probably end of life in a lot of instances, not being made anymore, or will soon stop being made. So if you see those on sale, might be worth picking up, but just make sure it's actually a pretty good sale. Otherwise, it's worth waiting a bit and seeing what comes out uh, in the future for the gaming cards. That's it for this time. As always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up some of our products, like the GN beer glasses or the shirts that we've had, like the Graph logo shirt was restocked recently. You can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or just subscribe for more information, especially with all the announcements coming up. I'll see you all next time.